This is the most exciting book I've read for a very long time. Welcome back to Levity Books Reviews. My name is Liam and I hope you're reading well. Today, I want you to picture just for one day of your life that you are a woman who chose to live as dangerously as you could. And that is exactly what this book is. The driver's seat is an exciting foray into one woman's day of chaos. The driver's seat is about a very eccentric woman named Lisa who decides to take a holiday somewhere south and she hasn't been there for three years and now's the time she's got an eccentric dress on. And that's the first sign that not everything is quite right with Lisa. Lisa is looking for a man. We don't know who he is, why she's looking for him, when he's going to show up, where he'll be, and we're continuously trying to understand what is going through Lisa's mind. This book really keeps you on your toes with trying to keep up with what's going to happen next. It's great for people who don't have a big attention span because it's only a hundred pages and things are always happening and you're always guessing. The driver's seat is unlike a lot of other thrillers in that Lisa, the main character, is the danger. She is the thing that you're afraid of, not the bad guys, not the unfortunate event. It's she that is the scary thing, but you also like her at the same time. She's likeable yet chaotic. It's such a strange combination but it really works. And so this has a very strong female protagonist, almost too strong. Lisa doesn't really know what to do with herself. She's in the driver's seat but she doesn't know where she's going. And Lisa is one of the most seductive female protagonists I've ever read before and I think it's interesting to think about why with comparisons to figure out what this story is trying to tell us. Lisa doesn't have the silent longing of Blanche Dubois which wins over Stanley Kowalski. Lisa doesn't have the cool indifference that Holly Golightly has in Breakfast at Tiffany's. She's not as compliant as Dorothy Parker's Big Blonde. She's not as disagreeable or bitter as Esther from The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Lisa takes a much more unusual tactic in that she approaches directly the most outrageous men and she will flirt with them and then immediately start looking at another man. Like she turns other men against each other and it's both funny and scary to read. It seems like she's a femme fatale, like she's absolute trouble. She's just trying to provoke and cause chaos everywhere she goes. And that makes it a very interesting read because it's written with such realism that you can imagine if someone really did want to create a lot of chaos, it would play out just like this. The book is very funny but also very sad and I think that's what makes it such an excellent novel. It's such a variable read and it's also a light read if you're not paying too much attention. You can really love this. If you're casual readers, you can really love this. But there's lots of themes here that could be explored by serious readers, so it really works for everyone. For me, I think there's a deeper level to this book. It reminds me a lot of existential novels, particularly The Stranger by Alma Camus or Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. And I know those seem like strange stories to compare it to, but hear me out. In both of them, we have characters which slowly go through a story which just has more violence and hostility just building and building, whilst the main characters are questioning their identity and trying to find some sense of belonging. But of course, because this is written by Muriel Spark for a strong female protagonist, this is like the other side of that. It's like the flip perspective. And I just think it's really fascinating for that reason. It's such a complementary take to that same existential angst that these characters can have in stories. And the reason why I think this is particularly the case is that both grief and there's a very explicit commentary on feminism in this book feature respectively in The Stranger and in Fight Club as origins for the hostility in those stories. So I think the book could be seen as a social commentary. From reading this book alone, I think Muriel Spark might be an unappreciated female writer. She's from Scotland in the 1970s and she's writing at the same level, if not better than Flannery O'Connor and the other Southern Gothic writers. Like she has this seriousness and brutality, but humor that is just so wonderful, so wonderful to read. And I really want to get her collected works and continue through this. I think she has a Christian background, which gives her that drive the same way Flannery O'Connor has 
her Christianity, which lets her talk about very serious themes in her writing. And I just really love that kind of writing. I dislike it when a female writer can bring out darkness, but a reality that's believable, a psychological reality that's believable, that's talking about the dangers of reality, but also has this lightness to it. It's just that complete picture is, is what I want for writing, and I, I really got it here. I'll definitely be reading more of Muriel Spark. She might end up becoming my favorite British author, but for now, I'm just gonna tell you, if you want a fast book that you're really gonna like, just twisting and turning, you're gonna really love reading this. Happy reading.